Hallelujah. This is not a time to fear, but it's a time to give him praise and bless the Lord. Hallelujah. Wherever you are with the streaming line, we thank you for being here. But just lift your hands unto the Lord God Almighty and let him know, I will bless you, O oh God, with my hands lifted up and my voice filled with praise. I will bless you, O oh Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Father, in the name of Jesus, oh, had it not been for you on today, we would not even be here to be able to stand and lift our hands unto you and our praises for my lips. Let it be a sweet fragrance in your nostrils. And Father, we speak in the name of Jesus. Sometimes we have to take it back with our hands lifted up and with our voice filled with praise. Hey, God. We're coming to you this morning, God, only the way we know how of grace, grace, and mercy. That, Father, you would touch everyone who's listening and who's here at this present time. Bless our mind, our heart, our bodies, eh, God. We speak, Father, that a word shall come forth that will direct our path and then bring them into that purpose, my God. We come against every plan of the enemy as we shift the atmosphere on today. Hallelujah. We shifted, God, even into Washington, D.C., God. We shifted in the White House. Hallelujah. We shifted in every nation, God, because you have given us the power and the authority to command and demand a shifting in the atmosphere. Let it be of peace. Let it be of love. Let it be of healing. God, we give you all the glory and honor, and we thank you this day. God, let it be, Father, that I die hereby in the flesh, that you may rise up, and what word is spoken is the word that came from you. Hey, glory. Now, we thank you right now that every tear that comes down on today, God, that you will hold them in your hands, and every mind, God, that you will regulate the mind. Hallelujah. That's disturbed and, and problematic. God, we come against it right now. And we speak peace, peace in Jesus' name. Have your way, God. Eba. We'll forever and always give you the glory, honor, and praise in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name. Can you all just sing one verse of that? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, we want to bless you. The heart of Don't you have a heart of thanksgiving? My goodness, my goodness, I will bless. I will bless thee, Lord. Come on, let's give it one more time. My God, I will bless thee. I will bless thee, Lord. Don't you want to bless the Lord upon today? Don't you want to give him a blessing? A praise and worship. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, my Lord. Thank you. Hallelujah. 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 It's not that I don't know what to say next, but because we have given him so much of our praise and worship, God is doing something extra here. Those who are in the atmosphere, you can feel in the atmosphere. Once you begin to praise and worship the Lord, everything that's going on in your thought concept and everything that's going on in your mind and your body begins to turn itself away from the flesh of the natural man into the spirit man where there's peace and love and harmony. And that's what God is teaching us. The title for today, Just Breathe. <laughs> Woo! Glory! Ha! Ah, hallelujah! <laughs> Sometimes we take breathing for granted because we do it on a consistency in the name of Jesus, and that's what we are supposed to do because it brings life. 
Hallelujah. But there's times that God means by just breathe. He doesn't want you to just take it for granted because there's something biblical about breathing. Come on, someone. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Those who are in, you may be seated. We're going to go into a couple of scriptures and I want you to understand one thing and then we're going to go because all he gave me was this. He said, remind them first of all that I've already given you things to study. I've given you words to go over. I've reminded you who I am. I let it be known the different keys that you need to unlock some stuff in the name of Jesus. So what I need you to do today is just breathe. Hallelujah. Sometimes we get so bogged with so many things in our mind and in our, in our thoughts and our planning for life that we get so bogged down that we forget to understand the meaning of breathing, the meaning of allowing yourself to breathe under the option of the Holy Spirit. My God. So in Genesis 2 and 7, it reminds us of one thing in the very beginning. The Lord God formed the man of, from, of dust from the ground and breathed into his nostrils. He breathed into his nostrils the breath of life and the man became a living creature. Again, the Lord God formed the man of dust from the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life and the man became a living creature. Now, one thing about this is so awesome to me is that the Bible could have said that God could have went to the winds of the earth. Any area of that he could have went there and offered from any area of the, of the world itself to breathe into your lungs. Any entity, he could have called it up and said, look, I want you to go from the east to the north and south and west. I want you to breathe into that person. But God, his own breath, he blew into you. Shut up. He made it personal. He said, I will not allow no other one or no other thing to breathe into man because I want them to be what? Like him. He made him into his own image. So why would he not breathe into you? So he wants to remind you, I breath, I breath, my breath is in you. I breath, my breath is in you. That's what I want to say. I begin to breathe in you life. So we get all concerned about the things of life when the God himself of life, he began to breathe inside of you. He gave you life. Hallelujah. And he wants to make this very simple on today. Hallelujah. That the promises of God is real and true. And all he's saying to you is that if you would just trust me, I didn't just breathe into you just to breathe into you. I wanted you to be of my image. So I said, if I was to breathe my breath into your lungs and cause it to come begin to become active and become alive, then I know for a fact that you are becoming a part of me. Are you understanding? You are a part. Don't just take your breathing lightly. He did that the only way anyone can leave when we are pregnant with a child. And if some of you remember those, that when you come out, the first thing that the doctor has to do is actually activate. And I'm going to say activate the baby's breath in the natural sense. In other words, they'll tap on them. Some of them won't not come right out breathing. He had to activate it. But God has already spoken and said, I've already breathed into our breath, my breath, my breathing. I blew into them. Already when they was in their mother's womb. That's what he wanted to remind you. When I was in their mother's womb, I began to breathe my life, my image. Come on, somebody. When you think of breathing, think of the image of God. Quit just walking around saying, I'm breathing. Because see, now you're noticing that you're breathing. Normally you would not. Because it's something that you wake up and do. It's something that is needed for life. It gives you life. It gives you creativity. Have you ever had the point when you would go with yogurt, the difference they tell you to, to relax and then to inhale and exhale? Have you ever heard of the, the type of songs that they would give you or the music, that calm music? Do you ever wonder why they ask that this is natural in man? It's because what they're trying to do is get your breathing regulated. They're trying to get you to calm down so that you can begin to concentrate on your breathing. Once you begin to concentrate on your breathing, 
You begin to calm down every aspect of your body. Your muscles begin to relax. Your nerve system begin to relax. Your brain function begin to operate in wisdom. You begin to think. Now that's man. Can you imagine what God is saying to you? Can you imagine what God is saying when he said for you to calm down, to relax? I got this. All you need to do is what? Just breathe. Hallelujah. Glory. Just breathe. Because he knew if you would just begin to breathe, you're going to begin to breathe his image inside of you. You're going to be able to act like him, not act like our flesh want to act. But you begin to create yourself into what, what would Jesus do? God has set up a plan. And let me tell you how awesome God is. And I love it about who he is. When you go into, uh, my God, in Isaiah 42 and 5. When you go into Isaiah 42 and 5, it begins to talk about the credentials, the credentials of God himself. And I love it. So when you go into it, it says, God, the Lord created the heavens and stretched them out. He created God. The, he created the earth and everything in it. He gives breath to everyone, life to everyone who walks the earth. And in the NIV version, it reads, this is what God, the Lord says, the creator of the heavens who stretches them out, who spreads out the earth with all that springs from it, who gives breath to the people and life to those who walk on it. In other words, when you look up, he's telling you about who he is. First of all, his credentials that God, the Lord, I'm the Lord. He began to make a credit check. I'm the Lord. I'm God, the Lord. He gave you a credit check. First of all, ain't nobody like me. I'm the Lord. I'm it. He did a credit check. First of all, I am it. Hallelujah. And then he began to say, now you can look up to the heavens. And I stretched it out. I set that up. You can look to the earth. And I've already made the plans on the earth. And then you can look in the mirror and look at yourself. Because I breathe in you, me. Hallelujah. And that's all he wants us to understand on today. He said, I want to give you a credit check of who I am. I've already given you my word. Oh, are you studying my word? I've already told you what to do. I've given you the keys. I told you to become attentive to what I'm saying. I let it up and I set you up for a blessing. Now, all you need to do is just breathe. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Why it's so important to just breathe? Because the enemy wants you all into a place where your head is at a place of excitement and, and confusion and angry and sad. Because when you cut the news on, you begin to realize, oh my goodness, everything about the news, don't get me wrong, it is what it, it is at a place where we realize it. And that is, there is a COVID-19. Don't get this all twisted. Things are out there. But he given us his word in Psalms 91. He reminded us what we are to speak of. He let us know about his benefits in Psalms 103. He let it be known to who he is. The type of God. He said, I've been here before. You may not have been here, but I've been here before. And all I need you to do is just breathe. I got this. Yes, you got to do the things that you must do. You have to walk in obedience. But you got to know that I've got you. Even though it might look weary sometimes. And you're looking at your check. But, but God said, all you need to learn how to do is turn around because every time you turn around he keeps blessing me every, you need to learn how to turn around sometime turn around don't almost change your position in life begin to turn somewhere go around quit looking straight begin to turn around and begin to decree some things that he keeps blessing me he keeps blessing he keeps giving me things even when I don't ask him it's just in my thought concept and because I'm thinking about it and because he loves me and because I'm walking in order he says whatever you need I got it and that's the important part of breathing because you're breathing God the desires of your heart should be the desires of God so if you keep breathing for Jesus if you keep breathing and praising God all you're going to begin to realize is when I breathe shut up, Woo, he goes before me because when you breathe the breath comes out before you get to it in other words when you breathe out I'm already in the place before you get there good God almighty glory to God that's why it's important to understand how to breathe why to breathe and the importance of breathing he did not just come down and breathe into one man he made Adam an example of all men and he said I'm going to breathe in one I'm going to breathe in all because I want you all to be in my image. 
I love you just like that. I want you to have the kind of power. I want you to have the type of anointing. I want you to have the type of hearsay. I want you to decrease some stuff. I want you to declare some things. And the only way you're going to be able to do it is that you have to breathe Jesus. You have to breathe God. You have to trust him. You got to have it by faith. You got to understand what it means. So he doesn't want you to just walk around saying, Lord, help me to do this. He said, if you would just breathe. I will go before you. My breath will come in advance of your situation. Oh, God. We need to learn how to breathe for Jesus. We need to understand the importance of it. In 2 Timothy 3, 16 through 17, I'm about to end here. Many of us read this before. We know that all scripture is God breath <laughs> and is useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting, and training in righteousness so that the servant of God may be thoroughly equipped for every good work. Did you understand how important breathing is? Did, did you get that? Did you get that? He breathed into you. He began to breathe into you because it helps to teach, to rebuke, to correct, to line up. And it gets you equipped for every good work. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's the kind of God that we serve you all. He wants you to just breathe. Take in his word. Take in what has been given to you. Many of you there have been reading and studying the word. And if you have not, this is the time to start getting into the word of God. There's things too much going on in this world. It's too much that's happening for you not to get into the word of the Lord God. That he can help you breathe his word into your situation. He will help you to breathe, to relax and say, I got it. He wants to let you know just how powerful you really are. Do you know how powerful you are? The enemy wants you confused. He wants you baffled. To not know the importance of breathing God's image. See, when you start saying that, it starts to look a whole different way. When you start saying, I'm breathing God's image, you start to notice something. That, well, if that's God's image, it means I've got the power. And I've got the authority to stand anything that goes on in front of me. That's before me. Things I don't even see as of yet. God is already working it. Because you have, you're breathing and your breath have came before your circumstances and before you can get to them before you can get to it the breath of life have touched it who's the breath of life God shut up I'm breathing and before I can get down there he's already took care of every circumstances that was before me because our breath was blown from heaven above. Hallelujah. So understand something. And I'm about to close here. Understand the importance of that. And you all can stand. Hallelujah. It's not about whether or not. You can make it. It's about just breathing. Because it's already done. When you breathe. The breath of life. And when you stand focused on him. It's already done. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. Roshandarabasata. All God wants you to do is remember to breathe him. Hallelujah. He knows that you got a daily life of breathing. When you wake up, you don't even think about it. It's just life. It was it is something that is needed and required to live. But so is biblical scripture of breathing. He was the one that gave you. The God, the Lord of Lord, the King of King gave you life by breathing into your lungs. Now it's time for you to take the same image of God, the same breath and blow it out into your situation. Blow it into your family circumstances. Begin to blow it at your job. Blow it to the nations. This is the decade of the mouth. It's time that we open up our mouth and blow it to every situation. Blow his word. Blow praise and worship. I come against the breath of chaos. 
in the name of Jesus and depression in the name of Jesus. Woo! I cannot get this enough. But all I know is that if you don't breathe for Jesus, hey, who are you going to breathe for? If you don't do for God, who are you going to do it for? If you don't stand for God, who are you standing for? If you don't stand with God, who are you standing with? If you don't walk with God, who are you walking with? If you don't sing for God, who are you singing for? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You ought to understand when you open up your mouth, something from the word of God should penetrate every situation because he breathed into you life and his word in the name of Jesus. So we got to understand when I walk, I'm walking for him. I done made up my mind I'm going to walk for Jesus I done made up my mind I'm going to talk for Jesus my mind is made up to sing for God I don't care what you say don't always allow your friends in your ear let the Lord let the Holy Spirit tell you my 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 no matter what it looks like I could be down and weary and my enemy could be looking well and fine but I've made up my mind that sooner or later he's going to hear my cry and right on time he's going to lift me up from my heavy burden I refuse to go here I'm going to stay right here I refuse to travel there I'm going to stay right here wherever he put you wherever he called you to be Hold on, hold on, hold on. God's coming. All he have done is that he reminded you, I prayed to breathe, to breathe in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. All over the building, lift your hands. Where you are, lift your hands. Allow him to breathe into your circumstances. So that when you open up your mouth, Jesus comes out. When you walk on this earth, decree that your feet, wherever it goes, that your footsteps will walk into favor. When you walk by someone, trust that your shadow will regulate whatever circumstances you walk by. Jesus. He's just that powerful. He's just that awesome. He's just that mighty. And he reminded us in the book of John that greater works uh, will you do. What kind of work are you doing on this earth? Are you speaking to things? Are you speaking to your circumstances? Are you decreeing some things? Are you sitting over in a corner saying, oh, woe me, oh God. And don't get it wrong. God understands that you're going through some things. That's why he said, "I, I want to breathe into you everything everything in the word that i have given i want you to understand your promises your purposes the plans that i have for you so that's why when you were first born my god he himself breathed life into you because he knew what was going to come up he knew what your life was going to look like but he said if i just breathe into that baby's womb into that baby's life from the mother's womb I know that the image of me shall come forth. It may not look like it when they're two. It may not look like it when they're five. It may not look like it when they're 16. And it may not look like it when they're 35. But I breath. My breath is sitting in them. Ah, And all you need to do is trust them. What do you see it now or later? You need to tell the Lord, well, it's now or later. I'll trust you. But you gave me the power to decree about my now, about my now situation. You gave me the power. I trust you with my now and later. But you gave me the power 
to declare some things. So I'm going to declare with the breath of life that you've given me that no weapon that's formed against me shall prosper. I'm going to begin to breathe life in every circumstance whatever it looks like even when I can't get out of my bed this morning I'm going to command my body to line up with the word that by your strikes I'm healed in the name of Jesus renewed strength I speak it and call it to be so in the name of Jesus a fresh anointing in the name of Jesus he's got it whatever you need it's in the house. Where's the house? It's you. You're the church. You, he, who he sits inside of. What are you doing with your temple? How are you handling the temple? Are you keeping it clean day and night? Are you hovering over it? What are you putting inside your temple? My God, my God, in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. All right, all right. Lift up your hands. Hanarabasha. Father, we thank you that you gave us your word in Genesis 2 and 7. You reminded us that you, you breathed into the nostrils of your people. You could have allowed anything else, any entity could have came in, but you took it personally. Hallelujah. Glory to God. You took it personally because you love us, because you want the best for us. The greatest good you see in us what other people don't see so we give you praise and glory today you even went into Isaiah 42 and 5 and you reminded us with a credit check that God your Lord I'm it I'm the Alpha and Omega I'm the beginning and the end so God help us to just breathe uh, just hold on to your word help us to know God that you said I'll never leave you nor forsake you there are so many God that are captured in the place of depression they're captured in the, the, the place of oppression they're captured in the place of suicide but we speak to them wherever they are. Even if they're held captive by man. God, we speak that your angels will come and, and open the door for them, God. And make a way of escape as your word has spoken. Give them a way of escape. We speak it right now. Touch every heart. That today is the day they're going to just breathe. <sighs> they're not going to think about all that they got to do on tomorrow. They're just going to breathe. And the peace of God that passes all understanding. Shakoba. Woshendoba. So rest over their mind, over their bodies. And before they realize it, whatever solution is needed, you have provided it for them. We speak to the lost that they would see Jesus. That they will repent of their sins and said, I, I'm looking for that Jesus that you're talking about, that God, that peacemaker, that way maker, that deliverer, that healer, that provider. Yahweh, Jehovah. I'm looking for him. That you will lift up your hands to God and, and your eyes close and say, God, I'm a sinner. Forgive me of my sins. I believed. I just believed that you died on the cross. And in three days you, you rose again. With all the power and authority. I receive you God. And God I receive the filling of the Holy Spirit. That that's going to guide me. Every moment of my life. I need thee oh Lord. I receive you as my Lord and Savior. God, use me as a vessel. <laughs> use me as a vessel. Give me guidance. We thank you. And I love you forever and always in Jesus' name. And for the backslider, say bye. I looked around and says, too much going on in the world. And, and we need Jesus. Well, where is he at? 
He said, I'll never leave you, nor will I forsake you. He's married to the backsliders. Come on. Come on back. Come on, bride. Come on back to your, to your father. Come on back to your husband. Come back. He's waiting for you. Right at the altar. The altar could be in your car. <laughs> the altar could be right in your kitchen. It could be at your job. It could be in the bathroom. God said, I'm everywhere. Just come back. And for those of you who just need a shifting in your, your spirit, just breathe. Just breathe. Relax. He's going to give you everything that you need. So, Father, we thank you for all and everyone. And there's someone got a word. It's very simple. Just breathe. Trust him. No, it's not easy. I didn't tell you it was going to be easy. I didn't tell you that it was going to be a smooth sailing. We know about the storms of life and we know about the storms in the word. But he, right at the time of your birthing, he knew what was going to happen. So he breathed himself into you so that all of the storms that you're walking through in life, you're going to take him with you if you say yes to him. Hallelujah. To God be all the glory. Thank you for being a part with us here at St. Mark Deliverance Center. I pray that you heard something. It's not that he doesn't want you to get the word. That is the word. He took us all the way back into Genesis. But he wants you to also go back and study what he's already given you. What he's already set you up for. And I'm going to say this at Abosha. That when you go back and study those words and the different scriptures and the different things that's been taught, that you're going to find your solution even the more. I'd hear it from the Lord. See, the enemy doesn't want you to go back. It's like I just studied that word, but I got to hear. I have to give you what I'm hearing. He said, go back. And when you begin to study, you're going to find your solution to your issues. I had already given them to you, in other words. And some of you missed it. But he's a loving God. And new mercy comes up every morning. And he didn't even have to tell us this. But he's so loving. He said, go back. Study. And see me in every situation you have. That I've already given you. Your answer. We love you. God bless you. Until we meet again. You can call and text. Hit us up on Facebook. We're on Twitter now. We thank God for that. Give us a call at 757-399-9915. And we're not there. Leave a message. We'll be happy to call you back. God bless you. From us to you, with God's love, have an awesome and blessed day in Jesus.